more stuff. Role of kinship, for example, in vervet monkeys, we talked about that the other day. Play the sound, an infant alarm call, and the mother gets all agitated and everyone else looks at the mother. They know that she's the mother, sort of demonstration of awareness of kinship there. Now, another very interesting social structure to some species, which is we've seen all of these tournament species. You have one high-ranking male mating with lots of females and all that sort of stuff and polygamous systems. What about polyandry? Circumstances where a female is mating with multiple males. What about circumstances of stable polyandry, where you get, in effect, the inverse of a harem? You get a single breeding female with a number of males. And what is seen with a very, very high predominance is when polyandry occurs, you get a type which is called Adelphic polyandry. And the second I tell what it is, it will make perfect, wonderful sense. OK, two male lions sharing a pride? That's like not what you're supposed to see. It's one male lion, and Musa, Mufasa and his like, brother gets pushed out of there. And like that's not what you see when you study Disney lions. There's supposed to be only one male as the breeder and the pride. And, and occasionally, you see these prides where instead there are two males. How can they pull that off? They should be doing competitive infanticide, all of that. Who are the two males? Yes. You guessed it somewhere up there before. It'll be two brothers. When you see cases of two male lions sharing a pride, or flip the other way, when you see a pride being willing to tolerate two males in there instead of one, very, very high likelihood that they are brothers, this technical term Adelphic polyandry. And you wind up seeing one totally wild example of this in humans. As I went over the other day, looking at our humans tournament species, they pair bonding. We're somewhere stuck in between. We're terribly confused. What you see is most cultures traditionally allow polygamy, but most people are not actually polygamous, all of that. And somewhere in there, you've got to ask the same question. Hey, is there any polyandry going on with humans? And there is one wild cultural example of this. And this is seen in traditional Tibetan society. And there, you get Adelphic polyandry. You have the following structure in rural areas. A woman will marry a man. And in the process, she will marry him along with all of his brothers. All of his brothers, she marries the entire lot of them. It is Adelphic polyandry. And you see that, and like it's down to the point where here's this woman with her husband and his younger brother and his younger brother all the way down to this infant that she's holding, who's the youngest brother, who's now one of her husbands. And that's what you see. What's the explanation for this? This is a pattern that you get in agriculturally very impoverished areas where you've got a problem. You've got five sons or whatever, and with a pattern of land inheritance where you would otherwise split up the land amongst the five sons, that's going to put each of them below subsistence level. What you need to do is have a way in which they remain as one reproductive unit. So you don't split up the land. You see this Adelphic polyandry, a woman marrying this whole bunch of brothers. And it's in circumstances where it's trying to keep the small farm plots from being broken up. But again, the logic there is the same as you see in lions with two brothers sharing a pride.